So if you didn't know uh, what happened with Mark Driscoll, basically there was this huge men's conference that went on. I wouldn't call it a biblical conference, but they had lots of these charismatic, big, big evangelical speakers, I guess. They had crazy kinds of entertainment, like um, sword swallowing and like almost like stripping and with this man. It, it's crazy, and you know you can watch the video uh, that I had uh, for more on that. But basically. Um, in my last video, I talked about how Mark Driscoll, I disagree with him on many a thing, and I'm not a fan of him just generally, but I at least admired his ability to go up and confront this kind of sinful craziness. But of course, immediately as I put that video up, he kind of takes back everything to some extent. Mark and Grace have been friends through the years. When there was trouble in Mars Hill, Debbie and I sat on our couch in our family room and wept. And you guys have been some of the greatest friends to me and my family through the hardest seasons of our life. And I thank you for being a good pastor and spiritual father. Let me tell you what I said to my son as we were sitting over there and Mark was talking. You want to know what John the Baptist was like? Mark a prophetic voice to our generation. Nothing about what was said changes that. And I, Mark and I talked. We went outside where we could be alone and we could talk. And we reaffirmed our friendship. And I, I told Mark, listen, he says, I'll do whatever you want. I said, well, if you're willing, if you're willing, I want you to speak again. I want to find out about Elijah. Yeah. I honor, respect, and love and admire you as the father of this house. This is the greatest men's event, I believe, in the country right now. It's stayed here for a long time. I believe what I should have done since I had another session. I was thinking about it. It wasn't in my notes. I didn't intend to go there. I was up late praying for the men. I just kept seeing it. And I should have, between sessions, talked to you rather than just verbal processing on the stage. And as the father and the head of the house, you could have given me a thumbs up or down. And I need to honor that as spiritual authority, and I honor your spiritual authority, I was happy. I apologize to you for not going that route, which would have led us from the most awkward moment in the history of any men's event. And I don't, I mean, if I were you, I wouldn't let me speak again. That's something you should pray about. So in this video, you see that he's back up there with his big, his buddy, uh, Mike Lindell, who's the head of the conference, and uh, they work through things, and look, I'm not against reconciliation, but what they're pretending to do is like acting as if they didn't do anything wrong. Like he's a coward for doing this. I mean, I just commended uh, this guy for for going up there and challenging this stuff and and speaking as a bold person against uh, the sinful things that were going on. But he walked it back and said, "I should have talked to you in private." You know, that's not the character of Jesus, especially with something so loud and open like this. <laughs> this is an enigmatic of of our Western culture with such cowardice. We're, we're, we're so afraid of truthfulness uh, and, and and honor and dignity, you know, like, and, and being consistent in our views. Everyone's afraid uh, of actually holding to the precepts of the Bible. People do it all the time with careers and you see that with singers where they're like, so what do you think about, do you think homosexuals are going to hell? And then they're like, oh, well, you know, I haven't really thought too much about it, but I know God loves everyone and I love everyone. So um, give me more money and Grammys, please. Like we see that all the time. People are so cowardly, even though they know the truth. And so with Mark Driscoll, you know, he knows the truth. He knows that's wrong to do. And he didn't exactly walk back fully what he said, but he said it was wrong to go up there and confront sin. I look, and like I said in my last video, there is a time and a place to confront sin. Um, other people think that it should only ever be done in private, which that's arrogance and, and silliness. We see that clearly in the Bible. If you look at John the Baptist, John the Baptist got killed uh, for boldly proclaiming the word of God. So John the Baptist, obviously you know who the true John the Baptist is. Um, and man, that's the irony of this. He's John the Baptist. He confronted sin uh, boldly. He confronted Herod, King Herod. And uh, so basically, uh, John the Baptist had previously multiple times confronted uh, King Herod for divorcing his wife and marrying his own niece, Herodias, his brother's wife. 
So obviously all this stuff is wrong. God clearly condemns marriage as a family and it's gross and disgusting, but uh, but Herodias was the one who actually really had anger that was kindled against John the Baptist. Whereas actually Herod actually respected John. And you can see that uh, if you read the passage. In Mark 6, 19, uh, Herodias, uh, it actually says that Herodias had been uh, nursed a grudge against John the Baptist and waited uh, for her time to strike against him. So, and then that's what we see here. It was uh, Herodias' daughter's birthday and King Herod had promised her to give her anything she wanted which is a crazy foolish thing to do, you know, blankly uh, signing a check and giving it to someone. What uh, Herodias' daughter said was that she asked her mother, and her mother said, ask for John the Baptist's head on a platter. And that's what happened. Like, it's funny, because like just like actually Elijah was hated by Jezebel, and you can see that uh, John the Baptist was hated uh, by Herodias, you know, you, you, you have these guys comparing Mark Driscoll to these guys, but it's like, in this situation, Mike Lindell's kind of like Herod, but he doesn't, and he loves his, you know, brother, I would assume in Christ. Um, I don't know where they're actually at, but, but in those situations, they boldly and without hesitation or, or in these situations, Elijah, both Elijah, even though Elijah had a lot of fear and, and cowardice as well. Uh, but John Baptist, he didn't. And he routinely went against Herod and Herodias, according to the scripture, because he was bold. And these guys are leaders. These are uh, authority figures. And that didn't stop him. And so, you know, for all those people that say, oh, he, he should have always dealt with him in private because he has a friendship with him. And yeah, should he have even been speaking at the conference? No, of course not. You know, I think it's uh, just, it shows you like, who are the speakers at these conferences that are allowing this? Because they're endorsing it, you know? Uh, that goes for Bill Johnson and all these other kind of heretics or heretical kind of teachers. So look, you hear it from me, he's a, he's a coward. It's, it's cowardly to go back on your word it's, it's cowardly to to say, actually, um, maybe I should have gone front to you like that. Maybe I should have said, hey, by the way, like, um, so I, I know you're not doing this. I, I, I disagree with this kind of stuff. Like, because what's the other option? He was he's like, hey, brother, like, what's the what is the outcome of that? Do you think he's going to be any less, uh, any more receptive to it in private like that? It's like, this is on the conference. This is a conference for thousands upon thousands of men and leading men astray into false doctrines. And look, and Mark Driscoll's been a coward for a long time. He avoided the criticism and accountability that he should have faced for Mars Hill. Uh, so, I don't know. I just wanted to uh, dish that up and show you uh, the latest update if you hadn't seen it. So, what are your thoughts on this craziness? Am I being too harsh on, on Mark Driscoll? Um, am I not being harsh enough? Mark almost had it right. He almost, he was right there in confronting sin, but he just walks it back. You know, never ever apologize for boldly proclaiming the word of God. Never apologize to these people because they will eat you up. You know, I think that's that's one of the biggest things, the worst things that all these people do is they crawl right back, uh, thinking as if that, like, as if they are the ones who will judge them in the end, and and it's wrong. Yeah, and these guys, they're not pastors; they're all wolves. They're just raking in the money and, and 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 selling them a false gospel. That's what Bethel does. That's what, that's what these big Eva churches do. Look, I pray for discernment. I pray for boldness. And I pray for discernment in, in what to do and, and, and how to do those things. So, um, so I say, I pray that you guys have a very discerning uh, spirit as well, that the Holy Spirit would comfort you and and help you confront sin in your own life as well as in the lives of others with love. God bless, guys.